So if you follow our channel much, you know that our purpose we take very serious and that's the fuel the growth and success of our team members, customers, and community abroad. One of the ways that we support our community is through uh, supporting ag mechanics projects in the local FFA chapters. Today I'm with Zach Milam, a senior, senior yes. at Chapel Hill High School here uh, just outside of Mount Pleasant. And he reached out to us with a special, uh, special request that we jumped at the chance to collaborate with him on. Zach, what is special about this trailer? Talk to us a little bit about what you built here and the, the purpose, the reason why you built it. So I built a 32 foot buffer pool and that's pretty rare in the trailer world is <laughs> from what I've been looking when I first started on the looking at like just trailer sites looking to see if I could find something that big and there was nothing around. So I knew I had to it was going to be something special. But my next door neighbor is Kent Stevenson and he had a dirt bike accident when he was 20 years old. It left him paralyzed from the waist down and he rides side by sides now because he can use his hands to drive them and he needed uh he can't still likes his, to have an adrenaline rush and stuff. So he has a crane on the back of his truck and it picks up his wheelchair and so he cannot have a gooseneck on it because it'll swing and he can't use his wheelchair. So it had to be a bumper pull but still able to haul two or three side by sides at a time. So that's what we got. Cool. So as Zach mentioned, the, the, the need was a little special in that typically to get a trailer this long or one to accommodate what Kent wanted to do, it's usually super heavy built and Kent wanted to avoid that because it, you know, it's been, it's been 10 years or, or 14 years since he had the accident. And so he's like, look, I'm tired of heavy trailers. And so once Zach realized, hey, this is kind of a uh, special project, he brought that to us, our engineers. We, we were able to leverage our engineering department to help Zach design something that was lightweight, yet had the deck space that Kent needed. So we're gonna do a walk around. We're gonna have Zach walk us through the, uh, through the trailer, kind of explain some of the features on it, and then we'll, we'll talk to him a little more about how it placed at the major show and what's next in line for Zach. So we're back here at the back of the trailer. Zach's gonna kind of walk us through, give us the top four or five highlights, you know, the things that he really appreciates about how the build turned out. So take it away, Zach. Uh, so first we have the ramps and we wanted to do a wide ramp that could load a variety of things because his track chair is only 30 inches, 39 inches wide, but then the side-by-sides are almost 80 inches wide. So we needed something that could load both types of equipment. And we originally thought max ramps would be the best, but David and friend brought to my attention how heavy those ramps are and that would be a lot of added weight that wasn't really needed for lightweight side by sides. So they thought we could take the car hauler ramps that y'all have and stretch them out to 36 inches wide and make them a so big versatile ramp but still lightweight not taking up all the weight. So we came up with this and they're awesome. They go when you pull them straight out it's 77 inches wide and you can stretch them all the way out to 102 if needed. So it's it's really nice. Sure, you've t and y'all test loaded like his machines and the track chair and all that yes. on it, it works yeah. We've works done out. everything. When you pull them straight out, the machines can drive up and the track chair. It's almost wide enough that you could drive the track chair up if you wanted to. Uh, and I don't know if he'd do it, but it. yeah, <laughs> it's got like two inches of hangover on both sides, so. Well, it works out too, because the, uh, the the punch sheet metal, I mean, gives good traction. Right? Yes, great traction. Yeah, it's, and then he can pretty well pull up to the back of it in his track chair and then just slot them out, like pull them out and drive, kind of slot them out. Yes, he can. Awesome. Cool. So next we have, we did a six inch I-beam frame instead of a normal eight or 10, and that dropped the weight down significantly. And when we did the smaller I-beam, we were able to use a lighter axle so we didn't, cause we didn't have as much weight on them. And we did a 6K and that actually dropped the trailer three inches lower to the ground, making it easier to pull and so forth. It's kind of in that effort we were talking about earlier where typical trailers this length are gonna be a lot heavier duty, heavier axles, all of that. So kind of, it took just a little bit of a, a little bit of creative thinking like to be able to do all those three things in one and capture the, the, the I guess the, the functionality he was after. Yes. Cool. And so we're, Versatility was a big thing we were talking about on this trailer. So we did the rub rail. It's a little different than just standard stake pockets and flat bar on the sides. This is the rub rail that y'all have used on some trailers and we kind of modified it to make it fit on this one, but it's got strap points everywhere. So it's so much easier to strap everything down on the trailer and yeah. get all your side by sides secure. You pretty well have uh, tie down capability all the way up and down the yes. side of the trailer. You can use the standard flat hook straps, or you can use the ATV straps in the, what I call the little smileys on the side, yes. but to where you have plenty of, uh, plenty of ability to strap down and be secure. For sure. Yeah. 
cool. Up front, what is what are we going to see up front? The Risen Drive Over Toolbox. Ah, let's go up front and take a check. All right, Zach, so talk to us about the toolbox up front. You had mentioned that being one of your, your key points. So what uh, what's special about it and you know what do you like about it? All right, so the drive over toolbox that y'all have on low boys and stuff is awesome. We've got one on one of our trailers and Kent was like, why can't we do that on a, one of our trailers, like this deck over? And I was like, well, I think we can probably figure that out. So we, we just, me and David and Efrain, we all kind of looked into it and we came up with this and it's awesome. It's, I mean, you got full deck and then you have another almost three feet on the front of the trailer for your drop, put the track chair on and stuff. Uh -huh. So it was. So you kind of use it for the same same purpose. I mean, he, he puts a track chair, can kind of cheat it over on the tongue, which would normally be kind of void void space, right? Yes. He cheats it over on the tongue, but has a lot of storage in there as well for what? What would he know? Straps and tie downs. And we put an air compressor in there. We're still working on getting that all hooked up and everything, but the air compressor so he can air up his tires when they go on rides and all that stuff. Yeah, so it'd be kind of a, a self-contained trailer to, yes. to a certain extent. That's all, awesome. that sure. is awesome. All right, guys, so we, we're going to finish with some lightning round questions for Zach. Number one, what was your favorite thing about the trailer? Like, what did what's something that you learned? What's what did you like about it? Well, I learned what a torque tube was. I'd never heard of that before. And after we started talking about it and everything, it made a lot of sense on how it worked. And we after we put it in and I jumped on the back of the trailer, I couldn't believe how much it like stopped the flex from happening. It was really cool. And I also loved working with David and Efrain in the office, like looking at the computers, on the looking at the drawings and everything. I love getting to do all that and see it all come together. Yeah, it's pretty neat. That that torque tube concept been around a long time, and people uh, a lot of times on you know they don't give it enough credit, right? And because you figured, what's this big piece of pipe gonna do? Yeah. But once it's all stitched up, you realize, man, it actually it actually does quite a bit, yes. you know, for a long deck over like this. Which especially, you know, in this one being a little lighter weight, um, it helped kind of keep the frame in check, right? Yes, with so, the lighter I beam and stuff. For sure. So as far as the show goes, you took it to Fort Worth. How was that? Like, how did it place? What was your experience like? Well, that was my first major show I've ever done, and I thought it was really cool. And I got a blue ribbon, which is a 90 through 100 on the rating. So that was I was happy with it, and I was just impressed by everything there and just how big the show was. That's cool. How many? Do you know how many trailers were there? I think it was over 200, if I'm not correct. Oh my goodness! So your dad is a career salesman, right? Yes. So did he, did he give you any point? Yeah, pointers? it's kind of everybody says it's in our blood on selling <laughs> stuff, and so <laughs> I've been selling stuff my whole life, and yeah, I just kind of went with that. That was my strategy: was to try to sell the trailer to them. That's right. So what was the biggest obstacle that you faced in in the construction of the trailer? One of the big obstacles we had was the cross members. I got them a whole inch off everything behind the fenders and when we went to put the rub rail on we were like why is it you know like crooked and then we started measuring and we figured it out that it was one inch off so we had to cut all that off move them over and then re-weld everything and then it made sense while well, it was all lined up <laughs> after that. So you cut them completely off and just replaced them? I cut them all off and yes we replaced all the back and ones. Started over it. Yes. Hey, sometimes it's just best to stop reset and go again yes, right that's what instead we of do. trying to patch it or, mm -hmm. or do any you know adjust so cool so the last question um what's next for zach you know you you you, you did all this you're you know you're you're senior in high school going off the real world what's next for zach well i'm going to university of mississippi and i'm getting a business the business real estate degree well, that sounds like a lot of fun. What do you, what do you I'm assuming you, you sell real estate. What do you do with that degree? I actually want to do like property development and kind of own my own company. Oh, that'd be awesome. So, so no metal fabrication, no engineering, no, we couldn't coax you into coming to work at Diamond C, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, we don't, not sure yet. We, yeah. Never say never. Change. <laughs> never say never. Yes. All right. Well guys, we, I hope you uh, got a, you know, appreciation of the insight. You know, we we're, like I said in the intro, we're super passionate about helping young individuals to fuel the, their growth and success. Um, any last words, Zach? Yeah, I'm good. You're good? All right, well, we will see you on the road.